All right, y'all, welcome back to the channel and to some more slug testing here. And I've got another interesting one out here today that a lot of you guys have requested to see. And after doing some of the other tests that we've done, I really want to test these as well and see if we might be able to get any kind of different results here. So for the load we've brought out here today, I've got some of these guys, the Brennicky Red Magic Sabo Slugs. These are the 12 gauge, three inch, one ounce slugs. And on the back here, Brennicky has posted some very specific details. So I'm really curious to see and looking forward to see if we can get anywhere close to this or match it or maybe even do better. But it says it's a one ounce, 432 grain Sabo slug that supposedly with a five shot group, it'll give a three inch group at 100 yards so we'll see kind of what kind of accuracy we can get there and for muzzle velocity it says 1756 feet per second and that should give us 2958 foot pounds of energy there so we'll see how close we get to that muzzle velocity and that accuracy and things like that out of these shells i'm really curious to see how accurate those specific numbers actually are on this box here and for the setup we've got out here today to run those red magics through, I brought out this guy. This is my Remington 870 Magnum Special Purpose with the fully rifled 18 and a half inch cantilever barrel setup on it. And it's got a loophole VX1 2 to 7 by 28 up on top there. Now, if you've been following along with the channel, you know that this setup has been very, very picky for ammunition. So... I'm really looking forward to seeing if the Brennicky slugs might actually bring this thing into what I know that it is probably capable of doing for us. So as for the test, we're going to do it the same way that we've done all the previous slug tests through this gun. We're going to start off at 50 yards and we're going to shoot a three shot group at 50. It's going to be on the smaller target at the top to start out with. And then we'll move the target to 100 yards and shoot another three shot group at the bottom target, which is the bigger target. And I do have my chronograph out here as well. So all of the shots will be through there and we'll see what kind of numbers we get compared to what the box says. So let's scoot over here and start shooting these things. We'll start out with the 50 yard group and then move to 100. Then we'll take a look at what we got for chrono numbers. And then I'll pull the digital calipers out and measure what kind of accuracy we got out of them. So let's head over here and get set up and start shooting these things and see what they might be able to give us i'm hoping it's quite a bit better than what we've seen before but we don't know unless we try it All right, so now we're back taking a look at our chronograph here real quick. And remember the box was calling for 1756. Now I don't think we quite saw that. I think it was hovering right around 100 feet per second under what the box was claiming. But we do only have an 18 and a half inch barrel and they may very well have tested it through a longer barrel. So at least we were relatively in the ballpark. But let's look at the actual numbers and see what it gave us. Okay, for a high we had 1650. For a low it gave us 1631. And that gave us an average of 1639. So we were right around 120 feet per second under what the box was claiming. It's not entirely unexpected being that it is an 18 and a half inch barrel. But at least they were very consistent as far as velocity goes. But let's take a look here and see what kind of accuracy we actually got out of them. Okay, real quick note here before we look at the accuracy. I found a few of these Sabos downrange. They only flew about 20 yards, so not very far. But this is what they look like here. And what I found really interesting is look at the helical spin on those pedals there. You can really see how either they were designed to do that or the rifling really had a good grip on these things as they were going down that barrel and just twisted the plastic. So definitely really interesting to see here. All right, so now we're looking at our target here, and this is the result that we got. Now, right off the bat, I think it's really interesting to see here the star pattern that these things punched into this paper here. You can really see the grooves on those slugs going through these targets. But let's start off with this top target up here, because that was our 50-yard target. And after seeing that, I mean, it's not terrible by any means, but it's about average. And I'm not going to lie, I was thinking, well watch this thing kind of open up again at 100 but we'll get there in a second but let's measure that top group first at 50 and see what that gave us 
Okay, so our 50 yard group gave us a 1.54 inch group and that is from center to center on the farthest two holes apart. So definitely not anything I would call super stellar or amazing, but definitely not terrible either. I would say to start out with, that's about average from what we've seen with this gun at 50 yards with most slugs anyway. But with it being right at a one and a half inch group and the box claiming three inches at 100 yards, we're right on track there for what they were claiming. But speaking of the 100 yard group, that's our bottom target here. And these two shots, we're looking really really good and then that last one hit low there now i don't think that was me i felt really good about the trigger squeeze and we kind of saw a similar thing with the top group here how these two shots were touching and that one fell just a little bit lower so it's not looking absolutely just stellar like a rifle target would or anything like that but let's measure it and see what we got and see how close we actually were to what the box was claiming Okay, so that bottom group at 100 yards gave us a 3.38 inch group. And that is from the center of that top hole to the center of that bottom hole down there. So if you remember, the box was claiming 3 inches at 100. And that's 3.3, so we're pretty much right on the money. Now, I think this is a case of it looks a little worse than it might actually be. Because 3 inches doesn't sound all that great or whatever, but it's exactly what the box was claiming, if nothing else. Now looking at this, I think it could go either way. I think we could shoot group after group after group. One might be a two inch group, the next might be a four inch group, but I really think this is about average because I felt good about all the trigger squeezes. But I will say this, I am much, much happier with how these Brennekes have performed than anything we've shot through that 870 so far, I can tell you that. Because this, you could make something work at 100 yards with this. So definitely, we ain't looking too bad on this one. All right, y'all, well, what did you think about that performance? Like I said, the numbers may not seem extremely amazing and it may not pass the looks test just by the correlation to the size of the target and stuff like that, but I would say the box was right. 3.3 inches on a three inch claim there, I think we could definitely get it to exactly three inches if we shot another group, for sure. But what do you guys think? How do you think they performed? But if you use these Brennecke Red Magics, what has been your experience with them? And what kind of accuracy are you getting through what kind of setup? I'd really like to know what you guys are running. But on that note, I'm going to jump back to all the testing and some hunting stuff coming up real soon for you guys as well. And I'll mention, as always, we do have an Instagram where you can see things like this a little bit ahead of time, as well as updates and other things. So I'll leave it linked in the description, like always, if you want to go check that out. But leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. I'm going to get back to it. So I'll see y'all in the next one.